Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft How To. You wouldn't believe it, but this is still the same world we were in last time. In modern Minecraft, there are a number of mods which allow you to create your own worlds with various different features. So, I'm not gonna, well, I'm not gonna cover them here, but the two mods that are most common are RF Tools, which is what's created this one, and Mistcraft. The mods allow you to change the various effects on the world, such as in this case of Enabled Amplified. You can make worlds of all diamond blocks, big orbs of diamonds, gold, iron, different biomes, you can make a, a nether biome, various different things. But that's not really what we're here to do. The reason I'm here is because I said in the last episode we would work on filling those chests. Well, this world has a high concentration of ores as well as being really cool to look at. So, I thought what we'd actually do is take a look at some of the item collection methods that exist in modern Minecraft. Let me set up the next step and we'll get going. Okay, so I've set up some examples of mining systems. And the first mod we've been looking at today is from the Bullcraft mod. We've discussed Bullcraft in the past, in the last episode. It's probably one of the first uh, systems that brought out a mining system. Its mining system is called the Quarry. Now, in real life, of course, the Quarry is an area where a large hole is dug and things are pulled out. In the case of a quarry, all you need to do is make some landmarks, which are these little blue things here, they're reasonably easy to make, and mark up three points on the um, on the ground. So I've already marked out where I'm going to place them, just so it's easy to earn. Now they do need to be at the same level and aligned with each marker. You can do, uh, if you need to have some help on this, with the landmarks, you can place a redstone signal down next to them, and you'll see that it shows a line coming out in all directions. And you need to place the landmarks on the same level in the same position as thing. you don't need the marker but it is a oh, sorry you don't need the the line the redstone signal but it does help quite a bit so as you can see it's right here now I don't need a fourth one because you can work out from here that the point here plus the point over that corner would equal a point over here. If you then, once you place them all down, if you right click, you'll see it turns red to indicate that it's aligned with that marker. If you right click the middle one, it'll actually draw a box around the whole thing. So once you've got your three markers pointed out, you can take out the lever, and you place a quarry at one of the sides, or one of the pieces to the side of the first marker. So that would be either here, or the up one, or in this block here. You place it here, it makes a funny noise, and you can see it draws a warning sign to indicate where it's going to be mining. It also drops the landmark so you can pick them back. If when you place down the quarry, it actually places the warning along the middle, 
then you haven't aligned your landmarks correctly. The maximum length that the Bullcraft Quarry can go to is 64 by 64, which is quite a large area. But as you can see, it's gone all the way down there to join up with that. And it's going up, it's going to start up there at the top. Now, all we need to do is give it power. Right, so we need to give it two things. We need to give it somewhere to put the stuff. Um, so we're going here and. Oh, I can't look here. The first thing we're going to do is put the power on there. And we'll just configure this up. Uh, we need to get, oops, to get the power from our base. Receive. And you'll see that it starts sending. Starts cleaning out the top area here. Now I'm giving it quite a bit of power, but you could start off with a little bit of power and it will just it will go very slowly, but it will give the items. The things that are within this yellow area here you will not get back. It will clear it out because it will build a frame which will go around and quarry out the area. So we'll just wait for it to finish. Okay, so just follow, uh, finishing off the final layer here. And once it's done that, It'll start building a frame around, which will be the how the quarry moves and does its work. As you can see, it's now placing the frame around, which are these yellow, the little orange blocks here. And it will place the frame right around that yellow warning sign. So there you go. Off it goes. You can see that in the chest, there are now blocks going up there. Remember, of course, I'm giving it quite a bit of power, so it is collecting very quickly. With the chest, when it does, when it becomes full, the quarry will spit items out onto the ground. So it's a wise idea to pipe the items into another into an inventory which you regularly check, or pipe different locations. But as you can see, it does do an area, and it will go from the top of the frame it makes down to bedrock level. The next mod we've also done a previous episode on, which is Extra Utilities. Extra Utilities provides a similar system to the Bullcraft Quarry, but it's much friendlier on the server. This is the Ender Quarry, much like with the Bullcraft Quarry, you do need to place Markers. So we'll put a marker there. This system, however, doesn't give you the redstone trick. At least I don't think it gives you the redstone trick. No, so it doesn't show any indication. However, I have previously marked it. You do, of course, need to be aware of the same thing again. That they need to be at the same level and at the same X and Y positions so that it makes a square. You'll note that when you get it correct, a little bluey purple particle effect flows off the marker. So, we will also do the one over here, which for some reason I So we'll just go over here and place down the other marker. 
because they're going to mark it out. And once again, you can see the blue purple effect indicating that the join is correct. If I was to place this down somewhere else, such as here, it won't make the effect, which means it's not connected up. You can also place these on a wall, such as that, and it will connect up. As long as it's the same height as the other rock. For now, I'll place it like that. So, once you've placed down your markers and uh, your free markers, you need to place down the, uh, the quarry, much like you did with the net quarry. You can place it there. When you're ready, right click on the ender quarry and it should say analyzing fence boundary. This is from the old way the quarry worked, where it didn't have markers and you placed fence posts in a square of all the edges. They've since added markers, which makes it much easier, but you can still do the fence trick if you want. Of course, you'll need to give it power. And once it has power, it will start mining. And it will start mining instantly, as you can see, it's already placing items into the chest. It also allows for some upgrades. You can place you can place the blocks for the upgrades on any of the sites, but it must be connected to the quarry. The upgrades include silk touch upgrade, which is the same as putting one on your pick, and will then return all blocks in their original form. For example, stone. There is also a speed two upgrade. And a speed free upgrade, which will speed up the speed at which, uh, the speed at which it mines. And I'm running out of room. A world hole upgrade. By default, the reason why this quarry is so much more effective is because it re replaces the block that it's mining with dirt. However, if you place a, uh, so you can see here, that's mine blocks already, and it's gone dirt all the way down. When I placed down the world hole upgrade, it then started making a hole in the world. And it will also start giving you dirt. This may be helpful to mark out where you've been, but it may also be very unfriendly for the server that you're playing on. Because the moment it touches lava, the lava and water will calculate and to, uh, may slow the server down. I recommend normally playing with the world hole upgrade off unless you need a visual indicator of where it is. There is also, with the ender quarry, a little purple line which you can see coming towards me now. Somewhere. You can see the purple line which indicates where it is currently working or it's currently mining. You'll note that it's unlike the quarry, instead of going back and forth, it goes up and down. This means you'll also get a, a much faster chance of getting diamonds. As you can see, the Bullcraft Quarry is still going along making a hole. Now this quarry, unlike the Bullcraft Quarry, yeah. uh, oh, that's a problem.
you know, the chest fills up. Unlike Bullcraft Quarry, which is bloody more Christ. When this chest fills up, the Ender Quarry will stop. It will not process anything else until it is able to place the next item. So, for example, we take the stone out, and you'll see that it continues on. But it will stop again because the chest is now full. This is probably also a good thing, because it doesn't require... It won't lag the server out when you run it at inventory space. Unlike the Bullcraft Quarry, which will spit things out, making item entities which have to be calculated. And if your quarry is going at full speed, that could be a lot of items to be spit on the ground. The next mod we're going to look at is how to get out of water. It's from Mechanism. We've covered Mechanism in all three episodes so far. And it's quite an extensive mod. In this case, however, it provides quite a large block, which requires quite a bit of space. Called the Digital Miner, which apparently is called a Bounding Block for some reason. Much like the other mods, it also requires power, which can be placed on the top of the device. And once again, we'll grab it from the main base, which will power it. So, it also requires a place to put the items, a place to put the item, which can be a chest, or it has an internal inventory. Right clicking on the device will bring up this interface. It takes a, a set of upgrades for energy and speed. It can be controlled by redstone. However, probably the most important things in here is you can configure it for various different settings. The radius is the size of the blocks to cover. So it'll be 10 blocks in all directions from the center. The minimum is the lowest level to mine from, or to collect from. The maximum is the highest level to collect from. So, if we look at our position, we're currently at Y level 78. So, we'd want to go from 0, which is bedrock, to 77. And this will update this area. I'll cover what the eye off means in a second. You can configure it for what you want to collect. This is the filter section. Clicking new filter will give you the option of an item stack, an all dictionary matchup, a material, or a specific mod. The most common item you'll use is item stack. And if you wanted to click just stone, you'd place, you grab your stone and left click in the slot. You'll note that it picks up the fact that it's a piece of stone. You can have a fuzzy mode on or off, which will mean it will be a bit more, a bit less picky. And you can set it that it has to replace the item with something else. Clicking save will then place the item filter into the system. And now the miner is configured to only pick up stone, which will pick up just stone in the area. If we now click the I button, the I here, which is inverse, it'll collect everything but the stone. So, if we click start, you'll see it picks up the dirt. And it tells us the 8,000 items that it has to collect. It's also picked up some yellow, right? But, if we stop it now, we can re either restart it. This is the, the clicking stop is equivalent to pausing. And you could start again, which will continue it on. Or, if you want to reconfigure it, hit the R button here for reset. 
what we're going to do this time, however, is turn off inverse, remove the stone. You can also add in an OR dictionary recipe, and we can go star OR, which will pick up anything that has OR in its name. Now, if we go back and we click on start, there's 2,000 items, but it's only going to return items which are ORs, such as yellow right, OR. It also has the ability to silk touch, so where it's working on the coal here, it'll actually return coal OR instead of coal. Auto pull, which allows you to have a connected in inventory with replacement items. And auto eject which by default, it will place the items into its connected inventory and you need to extract them. Clicking auto eject will place it into the connected inventory, such as the chest that we've already placed back here. <laughs> lastly, when you're setting it up, it is helpful to see where it's mining. So you can use the visuals button here to show you what the area is it's actually mining. And you can see that we told it to do one block under us, and now there are little dots indicating that this is where it's mining. Or it will mine. And it goes up to here. You can, of course, turn this back off by clicking the same button again. So, let's go have a look and see how our quarries go. So it's still running, hasn't run out of power, but you can see that the chest is obviously full because it is now sticking items everywhere. Turning off power to the machine will we'll let the quarry run out of power, which won't take long, and it will stop processing any further items until you fix the problem. So, these are just a few of the mods. No, these, so, these are just a few of the more common mods which can be used for quarrying and collecting of items. Most of them are mid game. And some of them do require lots of power. There are, of course, other mods. And it will depend on your pack whether these ones or other ones are installed. In the next episode, we'll probably look for ways of getting the items from our chests in the, uh, here at the Quarry World back to our overworld base. So that we can start filling up those chests back there. But for now, if you've learned anything from this episode, or would like to see more in the future, please leave a like. To be notified of future videos, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, issues, or ideas for future episodes, please leave a comment. Otherwise, see ya.